how to get the best deal, favorite chips, where to eat, drink packages. We get asked a lot of questions about Royal Caribbean here at royalcaribbeanblog.com. So today, I'm answering the type of questions I get asked all the time. So hopefully this will be helpful for anyone going on their first cruise up next. Hey, it's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com, and today I've got the things people always ask me about Royal Caribbean cruises, and let's jump right into it with when is the best time to book to get a great deal on a cruise? This is a really great question, of course, because people want to save money. That's totally understandable. And the answer to your question is it has less to do with when you book as how early you book your cruise. Royal Caribbean cruising pricing generally goes up over time. So when cruises are first announced and new sailings are put out for sale, the cruise ship is literally empty. No one's booked any rooms yet. So it has the maximum amount of availability. And as people start to book rooms up, there's less availability. And as you get closer to the sale date, prices tend to go up. Royal Caribbean cruises are extremely popular right now. And as a result, it's not like there's a whole lot of inventory that ever goes unsold. So prices really do go up the closer you get to your sailing. So if you want to get the best possible deal on your cruise, my advice is to book your cruise as early as you can. If you can book it 9, 12, 15 months ahead of time, you can really lock in some great prices. And if you live in certain countries like Australia, the United States, Canada, as well as a number of other countries, you can also take advantage of repricing where all the way up until final payment date, you can actually cancel and rebook your cruise fare if the price drops and take advantage of any price drops, but in the meantime, guarding against any price increases. The next question I get asked all the time is, is a Royal Caribbean drink package worth it? And the answer is a Royal Caribbean drink package can absolutely positively save you money. It just depends on how much you drink per day of your cruise to make it worthwhile. There are three types of drink packages, the deluxe beverage package, which includes alcohol, the Royal Refreshment package, which is all the non-alcoholic drinks, and of course the soda package. With all of them, it really amounts to you figuring out are you going to be able to drink enough of your cruise every day of your cruise to make it worthwhile? So the answer is yes, a drink package can be worth it, but you need to be having probably in the magnitude of five to six drinks a day every day of your cruise. Now, on one day, anybody can do that. But over the course of four, five, six, seven, nine days of a cruise, it becomes more difficult because after a couple of days, you kind of get used to it and maybe you're not really craving having that fourth pina colada of the day necessarily. So it really amounts to yes, it can be worthwhile. You just have to make it worthwhile. The next thing I get asked all the time, especially these days, the question of 2019 is what is the key and is it worth it? Royal Caribbean's key program is a new option that allows guests to buy certain VIP guest experiences on board the ship, such as priority embarkation, uh, signature activity access for just people with the key, internet access while on board the ship, storage of your luggage on embarkation day, and a couple other really nice perks. And if you're wondering if the key is worth it, it can be. It really depends on you and if you're going to take advantage of what the key offers. If you're not staying in a suite, you're below diamond in Crown and Anchor Society, and you were already going to buy the internet anyway for everybody in your room, then the key can be a decent idea. The thing with the key is you're splurging. It's kind of like going to first class on an airplane. You don't have to because the airplane's going to get you there the same way whether you're sitting in coach or first class, but it's certainly much more enjoyable to be there. The key is kind of like that because you're splurging, you're doing things, making your life a little bit easier on board, especially if you plan to take advantage of the access to signature activities on board, then yeah, it can be. So you should look at it as a splurge and not necessarily a necessity. The next thing I get asked all the time is, should I try a stateroom upgrade bid and how much should I bid? So Royal Caribbean's Royal Up program allows you to bid for staterooms and potentially move up your room for a fraction of the cost if you actually just went to Royal Caribbean and booked that said stateroom. The Royal Up program is an interesting idea and yes, it can't upgrade your room, but there are two major issues I think with it that you might want to think about before you put a bid down. Number one, you really have no idea if there's actually a stateroom to upgrade to. Royal Caribbean uses Royal Up as a means to not only offer stateroom upgrades, but also guard against if someone cancels at the last minute or changes rooms and they need to fill a room towards closer to sale date. As a result, sometimes you'll get an email saying, hey, congratulations, and now's not a great opportunity to do a Royal Up stateroom bid, but it doesn't actually mean there's an opportunity for it. And I think that leads to some different expectations. On top of that, you of course have the other part of the question, which is how much do you actually bid? It's a blind bidding system. It's not like eBay. You can see what the going rate is. So my advice is put a bid in that you think is reasonable without of course breaking your bank. And on top of that, you should always check back on Royal Caribbean's website or call your travel agent and say, hey, by the way, how much is it to upgrade to another room? And if you just did it outright, it's a lot simpler, easier, and hey, it may actually get the room you actually want to get. 
The next question I get all the time is, hey, I just booked a certain Royal Caribbean ship. Is that a good ship? And of Royal Caribbean's 20 some odd ships in the fleet, every single one of them is a great ship. When someone asks me, is this particular ship good or not? I always tell them the same answer, which is yes, they're all great. And I wouldn't hesitate to sail on or recommend any of them to sail on. But you also need to be aware of what are you looking for on a cruise and what features or amenities do you absolutely want to have on your ship? Royal Caribbean has a lot of ships in their fleet, but they're not all the same. And if you're looking for certain activities, amenities, or options on board, they may not be on the ship you booked. So if you're looking for water slides, if you're looking for a full Broadway show, if you're looking for a nursery, you know, depending on the ship that you're on, this may or may not be an option for you. So when it goes back to the question, is it a good ship? It really the question is, is it a good ship for you? And my advice before you book any cruise is to figure out what the ship offers, what it doesn't offer, and make sure your expectations are in line with that. That being said, all the ships in the fleet are great. And if you're not sure what you want yet, maybe you're kind of new to cruising, it's okay. All of them are really great. I think you just have to figure out what features are most important to you and ensure that ship has it. But the bottom line is Royal Caribbean has a fleet of really amazing ships. The next question I get asked is, I just checked in for my cruise and got an assigned check-in time. Do I have to arrive at that time? And the answer is absolutely not. During the check-in process, Royal Caribbean will assign you a check-in time for your actual embarkation day. This time is more of a suggestion than a requirement. It's not enforced, and unlike other cruise lines, you may show up at any time you'd like. Now, of course, the follow-up question is, okay, what time should I show up then? And the answer is, well, of course, it depends on you, but I often recommend getting there around 11 a.m. or so. The cruise terminal usually opens up at 10 a.m., and while I may get there that early, I'm a little eccentric, I would point out that getting to the terminal around 11 a.m., means you'll be among the first people to board the ship and you'll also beat that afternoon rush of people that usually arrive closer to noontime. The next thing we get asked all the time about Royal Caribbean is, I've read a lot of bad reviews about the ship I'm going on, am I making a mistake by going on this ship? Here's the thing, as soon as I hear people reading online reviews, I tell them to stop. Online reviews are notoriously inaccurate. Online reviews are great for entertainment and maybe you learn something from someone else's experience on board their ship and their sailing, but the bottom line is do not use online reviews as a means of determining what is a good or bad ship. There are so many things that are online that are rated poorly that don't actually mean that you're going to have the same experience. People cruise differently, people have different crew members they interact with, and people have different personalities. The bottom line is, your experience is not going to be the same as everyone else's, regardless if they had a good or bad experience on board their ship. I firmly believe that the experience you have on board is dependent on factors that no one can predict ahead of time, and certainly just because someone else had a bad cruise doesn't mean you're going to. I think your vacation is what you make of it, and I think that online reviews are usually written by people who are far from experts in any kind of either writing styles and or being objective in their review process. And the last question I get asked all the time, at least for the purposes of this video, is should I book my shore excursions only with Royal Caribbean? And I think it's a mistake to only book your shore excursions with just Royal Caribbean or never with Royal Caribbean. There are options to book shore excursions through the cruise line as well as on your own. And I think regardless of the port you're visiting, you should always consider both choices. Booking through Royal Caribbean does have its own benefits as well as booking on your own. And I think there's a lot of considerations involved. And to say that you should only book through the cruise line is a mistake because you're severely limiting yourself, not only in pricing opportunities, but also sheer variety of excursions. There's a ton of things to do on a Royal Caribbean cruise when you visit these amazing places. Don't limit yourself by just going through the cruise line. Look at both, and it's okay if you do book excursions at the cruise line, but don't set artificial barriers to yourself that quite frankly can limit the amazing things you can do while visiting in port. So there you go. There's a number of questions I get asked all the time about a Royal Caribbean cruise. No, this is not the limit of the questions I get asked. I get asked a lot of questions. And of course, if we missed your question, please feel free to type it in the comments below this video. And while you're below this video, make sure you subscribe to our channel, turn on your notifications, so that way you'll be informed when we have a new video. And be sure to like this video, because gosh darn it, it really does help. My name is Matt. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk again real soon.